So I run over and I'm holding his hand when he answers the door. And it's my uncle, my mom's brother. He's 20 years old. And he's standing there with a rifle in his hand. And all he said was, Paul, do you want to die? And my dad said, no. And boom. I mean, he shot him point blank range in the left eye. Paul, how did you find Conniful? You know, Dave, um, Carnivore found me. I didn't find it. Uh, I've always been looking and searching for the 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 best in everything. And um, I, I'm, I'm a truck driver. So truck drivers have to take a DOT physical, uh, Department of Transportation physical. Uh, if you're in good health, then every two years you have to take a, a, a physical. And they, they check everything. They check blood pressure. They check your sugar. They check all of that. Oh, hey, before we actually get started, Chicken Little Carnivore. Okay, my daughter got it for me for Christmas, made me wear it for the interview. I'm like, all right, that works. But anyway, um, I don't do regular doctors. I just don't. Uh, they're, they're pill poppers, man. I mean, you know, here's the next greatest pill that's going to cause you anal seepage. And, oh, I got a pill for that, too. Oh, kiss my ass. I'm not doing that. So, I mean, they have a purpose, okay? And they have a place, but they don't know their place anymore. They've been, they've been corrupted by the, by the industry, honestly. And so, um, so uh, I go to a chiropractor for my DOT physical. <laughs> and um, th this guy is awesome. He's just an incredible guy. And and something has changed about him. He looks amazing two years later. And this was in July of 2023, 20, uh, mid middle of July, about the second week, because my uh, my DOT physical was expiring uh, the middle of August, and I like to go early to get it done. And so um, I went in there, and we'll get into this aspect of the story, but I was juicing hot and heavy, okay? I bought a $300 Breville juicer. I'm spending a hundred minimum a week on fresh fruits and vegetables because I just knew that that was the way to do it, right? So, so I'm like, oh, so, 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 sorry to interrupt, but you're juicing in your truck. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm a local driver right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a local driver. But I mean, I would have because I cook on the truck. And when I was over the road, I cooked almost religiously on the truck. Um, but I was still massively overweight. I mean, you can look at my profile uh, picture. Holy cow. Six months ago, I could not bend over to tie my shoes. My daughter literally said, Dad, I thought you had a tumor because my stomach was so big. And uh, oh, so uncomfortable. So anyway, um, I'm telling that I'm telling my chiropractor, Doctor Strock, he's awesome. And I'm like, oh yeah, 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 I'm juicing. You know, I'm really proud of myself. I'm I'm doing something to improve my life. And he said, oh yeah, yeah, I'm a carnivore. I'm like, you're a what? I had never. I mean, I've, a lion is a carnivore. Okay, I know that they eat meat, but I never heard a human being being a carnivore. And I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, I just eat meat. And I'm like, okay, this has gone off the rails. I trust you explicitly, but this has definitely gone off the rails, man. What do you mean you just eat meat? He says, I just eat meat. That's it. And I'm like, wow, this is just so weird. So I left there with the weirdness coming on me. I'm like, okay, this isn't. This isn't even normal to just eat meat. I thought about it for a little bit on the way home, and I just put it out of my mind. I'm like, I'm juicing. I'm good, man. I'm I'm good. I'm I'm juicing. I'm I'm living life. I'm living large. By the way, I'm putting on weight uh, on top of what I already weighed. Uh, but I never thought nothing of it. I thought, well, I, I feel pretty good. You know, I, I didn't feel amazing like I do now. And so, um. And so then in August of, of last year, probably about the first week, second week of August, uh, I have some homestead. I have a YouTube subscription because I just don't do any. The world could be blowing up and on fire. I would not know that. 
I would not know that at all because I don't do anything with the news, the radio, anything like that. And I don't do commercials. That's why I have a YouTube subscription. And uh, plus it helps me with my alternative research. And so um, Carrie from Homestead How comes on. And I'm like, um, okay, this is weird because he's talking about carnivore. And now I'm intrigued because now there's some somebody else doing this. And I'm like, okay, he feels amazing. He takes his his big thing of pills and throws it behind him in a dramatic fashion. I used to be on these and depression's gone and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm juicing, okay? But I was hooked. Uh, it, by the way, it's 100% Carrie's fault. Okay, he is to blame for how good I feel today. And I, to I told him uh, in a comment, on one of his videos, I'm getting interviewed by Dave Mack and I'm totally calling you out, dude. It's just that simple. So, um, so I, I just, um, so I got hooked. I mean, I got really hooked. I have watched, it's been four months and one week. I've been on the carnivore plan and, uh, <laughs> I don't really call it a diet. I call it a plan, uh, or, uh, a lifestyle, a way of life. Um, because that's really what it boils down to. That's really what it is. And so uh, I've listened to hundreds and hundreds of hours of of carnivore content. All the doctors, like I was telling you before we, we, we went live, dude, all you guys are my best friends because you're telling me the truth and and everyone else is lying. And we're going to get into that, too, by the way. If the government says it, you know it's a lie, okay? That's just really, if, if, in today's age, if you don't know that CNN's lying, you're living with your head under a rock or a boulder or a mountain. And so um, so my, my story really, and that's, that's how Carnivore found me, okay? And so uh, my story begins... Uh, December 24th, 1972, Christmas Eve. Uh, I was four years old, um, and we had steak. I only had three or four solid memories of that particular night, and we had steak for supper. And I just remember I was a scrawny little kid. Uh, I had the brightest blue eyes you've ever seen, totally blonde hair, but I was a scrawny little shit. And I, I'm sorry about that language. I, I'll, I'll keep it as PG as I can, man. Because uh, on my channel, yeah. You can't, you can't offend me. I'm Australian. So don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, and uh, by the way, Old Crock Cheese is the best cheese in the world. So anyway, um, uh, we, we had steak that night for supper. And uh, I remember eating the fat off of everybody's plate. Mom was a terrible cook. Uh, but I remember eating the fat. Nobody wanted the fat, but I ate all of the fat. And, of course, I had to eat some meat because the parents made me eat some meat and, uh, and some veg. But the fat, oh, I can still remember how good the fat tasted because she burnt it. Okay. <laughs> so, so, like I said, not such a great cook. Um so um, there came a knock at the door, okay? And we didn't have an outside light on the house at the time. Uh, we lived in a, in a, in a trailer uh, in rural uh, Tompkinsville, Kentucky, out in the country. Real small community. It's still small. They, they got a Walmart. That's it. And so um, um, my dad, being the man of the house, gets up to answer the door. And... Um, and uh, I, me, I'm just, I'm four years old. I've just turned four. So I run over and I'm holding his hand when he answers the door. And it's my uncle, my mom's brother. He's 20 years old. And he's standing there with a rifle in his hand. And all he said was, Paul, do you want to die? And my dad said, no. And boom. I mean, he shot him point blank range in the left eye. Now, I don't know if you've ever... Uh, been on a farm. I live on a farm now with my foster family from when I was a kid. 
But when you, when we take down cows and pigs, we shoot them, we make it cross in between the eyes and the ears, and you shoot them dead center of the brain. And they drop, I mean, instantly. They twitch a little bit when they drop, but they definitely drop instantly. And that's what happened. And uh, so I took off running, okay? And my next memory is me hiding behind some boxes underneath the bunk bed. And so my, uh, my uh, apparently my uncle was there to kill me too. Because he was looking for me. And my mom was doing everything she could to stop him. Uh, of course, she got beat up pretty bad. Drug around the house by her hair. Uh, my brother had grabbed a 410 shotgun off the wall. And she took it away from him. Had it dead to, had that guy dead to rights. And uh, didn't pull the trigger. So go figure. He was, uh, I think, 12 years old at that time. And so um, my next memory is... My brother coming to find me because mom couldn't find me. I was hiding really, really good. Um, was us going out the back door of the house and running uphill a mile. And I don't know if you know anything about Kentucky, but it's very hilly and curvy. Uh, a mile uphill in the snow and ice because uh, it, it was cold, man. It was December. And uh, to the neighbor's house. And that's my last real memory of the night. Of course, I've got stories from my mom and my brother about all of that. Um, and um, my next memory would be um, would be the funeral, me being an ornery little shit running around the place. And uh, just, I just remember going up and taking my daddy's hand, saying, Daddy, get up and play with me. You know, get up and play with me. And obviously, he didn't get up. Um so I grew up with an alcoholic mother, okay? She was, like, I, I turned into a drunk. She was a solid alcoholic. <clears throat> and she was, um, she was a, um, a smoker. So she smoked. My dad smoked. She smoked while, I, while she was pregnant with me. They smoked in the house. They smoked in the vehicles. And they also drank. Well, she was a bartender when she met my dad. Uh, that's how she met him. Uh, stole him from his wife. That's a bad thing. But um, I never said she was good. And uh, But she did her best, honestly. She, you know, hats off to her. She did her best having to raise two kids And uh, after, after that happened. And so, um, and so I grew up in a bar like literally in a bar. This was when it was appropriate for little kids to actually sit at the bar in a bar completely filled with smoke. Uh, and it was a quarter for the jukebox instead of a dollar like it is now. And so, um, and so I grew up in a bar all the time in a bar when we wasn't when she wasn't working in the bar and i was at the bar we were at another bar that's just the way i grew up and so um so alcohol and tobacco was always part of my life i got uh i got drunk the first time when i was eight years old uh got drunk on mogan david wine she was closing down the bar with her boyfriend at the time and i went into the back room and snuck down a bottle of mogan david wine I gave it a sip and i was like oh that's pretty good wow i would never been so sick in all my life puking my guts out um but when i was eight years old i also started chewing tobacco you know dipping snuff skull and um and so all of these things were always a part of my life because I was always looking for an escape. You know, when you grow up with an alcoholic mother uh, or a parent of any kind, there's always a disconnection, okay? There, there's never any real, I know she loved me in her own way, but there's never any real connection. And so, um, so uh, there was that, and, and to bring this into carnivore, there was never any meat, really, because we were, poor man i mean i ate beans religiously we had beans at least two to three times a month a big pot of beans 
uh, with with ham in it, uh, and she would uh, she would always put some slices of bacon in the beans. So bacon and eggs wasn't for breakfast. The bacon was for the beans. And what was for breakfast? I didn't eat cereal. I despised it. But uh, cocoa wheats. I don't know if you remember cocoa wheats, but that was breakfast. Um, and if and of course toast uh, with real butter until they came out with margarine. And so, um, so we didn't. We would have pork steak maybe once or twice uh, a month, maybe. Uh, it wasn't until I got a little older that we actually started having steak. And then mom would take, uh, my brother was gone and out of the house. So I'm maybe like uh, 11, 12 years old. Mom's taking me out for a steak dinner. Oh my God. And I remember she would always say, um, now you want to eat your baked potato and your roll and your vegetables first before I even cut the steak open, man. Because uh, because uh, the steak, it'll keep. You know, because we didn't have microwaves back then. <laughs> Believe it or not, younger generation, we did not have microwaves. And so, um, and I remember we got our first microwave. Oh, it was a massive, massive machine. but And it didn't work worth a crap. It would warm up a cup of coffee, and that's about it. And, um, and uh, so we, uh, so... Like I said, we, 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 we would eat out and we, and I, I remember I could, I was a little kid, so I could only eat maybe half of my steak and, uh, but I would have steak that night, you know, or the next morning or, or the next day. So steak, you know, it just really wasn't part of my life. Um, as my kids got older, hang on one second, Dave. I don't want to skip anything. Oh yeah. Uh, as my kids got older, uh, yeah, um, I uh, I would um, I would make meat, and and to this day they'll tell you Dad makes the best meat ever, and I would grill the meat, and because uh, their mom couldn't cook, her idea of cooking was a box of banquet chicken thrown in the oven, literally, and so and macaroni and cheese and whatever. Well, I, I grew up eating that crap. I didn't want to eat that crap, and so. Um, so I would, uh, I would eat, uh, I would make, I was the main meat cook in the house. And, uh, of course the ex-wife, she, she never liked vegetables. And I was like, you have to eat vegetables. Uh, and she wouldn't eat vegetables. Well, seems to me she might've been right <laughs> because according to Chafee, plants are trying to kill you. <laughs> right. And so, um, and so, uh, so I, uh, I never wanted to be like my mom at 15. I ran away from home um, and ended up in foster care. And I got very fortunate. I ended up with the same family that I'm with now. And everybody lives on the farm. You know, the, the brother, the two sisters, the mom and dad, we all live out there on the farm. Uh, and it's just an amazing thing that the universe has done for me. And um, and so, uh, so I, I, I started out at 21 years old drinking, um, drinking a six pack on a Friday night. Okay. Because I thought, you know, I never want to be like my mom. I never want to get that bad, you know, but I was a heavy smoker. I'm going to tell you. And, but I never want to be like my mom. And so, uh, so I wasn't. Until about six months into six, uh, 21 years old, all of a sudden I'm uh, I'm drinking a six pack on Friday and Saturday night. By the time I hit 22 years old, now I'm drinking a 12 pack on Friday and Saturday night. I'm justifying all of this because I work. I work hard all week. I deserve this in my life, right? And so, uh, and so of course sugar and carbs was always part of the deal. Well, this alcohol problem progressed. It got to the point where at my worst for the last three years of drinking, I, uh, I was throwing up every morning because I was drinking Jack Daniels and crown Royal every day. I was drinking a, 
And, and you know, if somebody wants to judge me, okay, I'm good with that because I've been judged by a lot of people for a lot of reasons. Uh, I was drinking a half a fifth in the morning with my coffee just so I wouldn't throw up. And then I was going to work and climbing behind the wheel of the big truck and driving it all day. So I was drunk every single day, all day long. And um, then in um, then in August of 2023, uh, no, let me think, August of 2022, I had a, yeah, I had a, a major scooter accident. And so when the family watches this, I told everyone a deer ran out in front of me. I'm doing 50 miles an hour on my scooter down the road, just came back from the store of getting a, a fifth, okay? And I'm downing this fifth. I'm stopping the scooter, getting it out from underneath the seat, downing this fifth, and then getting back on the scooter. Um, the deer didn't run out in front of me. I blacked out. I blacked out driving the scooter at 50 miles an hour down the road. And I went down the deepest ravine in the whole county. Um, woke up halfway down. <laughs> boom, hit the bottom, flipped over the handlebars, um, broke eight vertebrae in my back and cracked, uh, busted two ribs, really messed up my shoulder. My right shoulder was just so messed up. And I uh, ended up in the hospital for five days. So, yeah, doctors have a have a purpose, I guess. Okay. The morphine was good. <laughs> Put it that way. Uh, and I got out of the hospital and, um, and uh, you know, I, I mean, I lit a cigarette the moment I walked out the door. Go figure, right? I just spent five days not smoking. And, uh, of course, my sister went into my house and threw away all of my alcohol. And, um, but that didn't stop me, okay? Because my sister and his his girlfriend were actually drinking wine at this time. So I thought, why, well, you know, a little wine ain't going to hurt nothing. A glass of wine or two. Uh, within a week, I'm, I'm buying a bottle a day. Within two weeks, I'm buying two really big bottles of wine a day and uh, drink until I pass out. Well, that lasted for like a month and a half. And I'm like, okay, I'm done with wine. I'm back to whiskey and beer. Cause I'm like, what choice do I have? Okay. This, this is the only life I've known. And so, uh, and so um, I just remember, I kept, re I keep remembering that this, I kept telling myself, this is not sustainable. Financially, this is not sustainable. And um, so January 1st, 2023, I woke up and I had a half a bottle of whiskey and three or four hardcore beers. When I talk in hardcore beers, I mean 9% alcohol beer. That's what I drink. And, uh, you know, uh, IPAs. So 9% minimum. And, um, and I drank those for breakfast. Didn't have any coffee that day. Uh, took a nice nap, and uh, we have family suppers on the farm, and New Year's Day, Mom always makes beans, because you eat beans for New Year's, that's good luck, and so, um, and so I went over and had supper, uh, hung over, but sober, okay, and um, threw up on the way back to the house, you know, it's 100 yards, because um, everybody lives right there on the farm, and um, threw up. And I said, you know what? I, and it, by the way, it was a struggle not to go to the store and buy more alcohol that day. That was a struggle. But what stopped me was it's New Year's. They're not open. Yeah, there was somebody open in town to get alcohol. But I didn't. The next day was a little easier. The next day was a little easier. I had zero withdrawals. Okay, I, my hands were shaking every day all the time but i had zero withdrawals and of course that's just shocking everybody my my one of my cousins said um what do you what do you mean you quit cold turkey you could die doing that and i said i didn't <laughs> you know i didn't die and so um and so in 2023 by by uh 
April 1st, so three months in, I had decided that cigarettes were not sustainable. I was smoking $14 a pack cigarettes. I'm in Illinois, so they're high dollar. And uh, I was smoking the best that they had too, Dave. I mean, I'm smoking uh, organic. Uh, there's no additives, no nothing, you know, uh, justifying it like that. $14 a pack and I'm smoking a pack and I have two packs a day. And I just remember thinking this isn't sustainable either. So uh, there was somebody who who uh, who had a, a, a hypnotized thing. So I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's go. And so I went, got hypnotized and uh, stopped smoking. Blow me, I quit smoking. Three months after I quit drinking. And so, um, so I'm... Uh, I'm going ape shit, okay, for, for an entire month. I'm just, I'm fidgety. I'm going crazy here. And then, uh, and so I picked up vaping. And I'm still vaping. Uh, it's not as bad as smoking, but it's still pretty bad. Uh, so that's, that's going to be going to the wayside before long. I uh, just haven't set a date yet. Um, but, uh, you know, I just passed my one-year anniversary being sober. Uh, that's amazing. I did a video on that. Um, it's, it's just an amazing thing to be sober every day. And since I found carnivore, oh my God, the, the energy, because, okay. So I got on this health journey starting April 1st because of not smoking. And so by, uh, May 1st, I was like, I need to get healthy. I need to lose weight. I know it. And I need to be healthier because I've always said I wanted to live to be 107. By the way, since carnivore, that's kind of went up to 120 plus. No kidding. I want to live as long as I can. I want my great, great, great grandchildren to change my diapers. That's how long I want to live. Okay. <laughs> or prefer not to have booby pants at that age. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I um, uh, I just followed the 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 standard plan, okay. And I went vegan, vegetarian, okay. Fat, bad. Red meat, bad. Fish, lean chicken, good. Sorry, okay. when did you you started going vegan? May first. Yeah, May first, twenty twenty three, and and that's when I bought the Breville juicer. Uh, I started with a hundred dollar Walmart juicer. I'm like, oh, we can do better than this. So I bought a three hundred dollar Breville juicer, and um, I'm, I'm spending a hundred to a hundred and twenty five dollars a week. That's just for the juice, okay? And I bought the big bottles and all that stuff, the glass bottles with the with the stainless steel caps and. Man, I got it going on, okay? I'm juicing. I know I'm doing the right thing by my health, but I'm putting on weight. Well, this ain't right. And uh, and about two weeks before I discovered carnivore, uh, maybe, maybe a month before I discovered carnivore or carnivore discovered me, I, um, <laughs> I, I said, well, I'm going to juice fast. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose some weight. By golly, I'm 225 pounds, man, and um, and so I did a five day juice fast, which was easy because I was getting nutrients. But I followed that juice fast by a two day water fast, and it just about killed me. I took a, a short little nap at work uh, because my work affords me the opportunity to be able to do that on the weekends, and this was a Sunday, and. I woke up dreaming about McDonald's and I despise McDonald's, but I was dreaming about it. And, um, and it was hard. I have fasted on and off, uh, because I was in religion for 22 years of my life. Uh, I've fast, I've did 10 day fasts. I've done five day fast, three day fast. Uh, I would fast from Christmas to new year's. I'd make this great big Christmas spread and not eat any of it that would piss the ex-wife off big time and so um so i was always uh, always able to go without eating 
that wasn't ever an issue uh, until that particular fast. Well, I was starving myself by not eating meat. And so the five-day juice was fine, but the two-day water, oh my gosh, it was unbelievably bad. That's kind of how I got into carnivore. Now, since carnivore, I can put this up now because I, I, I'm done with the whole backstory. Um, <laughs> sorry, it was kind of a long backstory. Um, but uh, I, uh, I discovered carnivore. And the first three weeks on carnivore, I, I was still eating ice cream. I was addicted to ice cream. I was addicted to sugar. And of course, you know, since then, I've found out that the same areas of the brain highlight under an MRI if you're on sugar and carbohydrates as they do crack cocaine, as they do crystal meth, as they do uh, heroin. Wow, that that's an eye opener. I've learned so much in such a short period of time because of good quality information by the doctors and by everyone else. Like Kelly Hogan's amazing, Steak and Butter Gal's amazing, you know, all the doctors are amazing. Um, and so um, so I I gave away all my food. I, I I got rid of everything except ice cream uh, when I when I made the carnivore switch. And I was beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Uh, and, um, I remember the first week was weird. It was just really strange, but I wasn't hungry and that's not something I was used to, but I was still having ice cream, at least, uh, a quarter of a gallon. Uh, and then it, the last time I had ice cream at the end of the third week, I had an entire half a gallon at one time. And I remember I was still having to come home from work and take a nap. I'm talking taking an hour to two hour nap before I went to bed for eight to nine hours. So, yeah, it was just awful. And I was still just, I mean, just, oh, my gosh. Bloated uh, so, uh, I, I just, uh, I've got a name for that. I've just come up with pre-bed. Pre-bed. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's true. And so I was always napping all the time. It was just awful, man. I, I've napped once since since I quit ice cream, and uh, and I was I was cooking on the grill and you know just eating t bones and then uh, I get Mexican meat, so I get ribeye and t bone for like six bucks a pound. Oh boy! And I'm pretty sure that this is not grain finished. It's grass fed, grass finished. And so, um, so I, that's mainly what I eat. I do splurge sometimes and get some really, really high dollar ribeye. Um, but for the most part, six bucks a pound. I mean, that's how much hamburger costs for crying out loud. And, uh, and I have a, um, I've graduated up to having a Ninja indoor grill. Oh my gosh. That's a game changer. It's got a thermometer and it cooks steak perfectly every single time. It takes longer to preheat than it does to cook the meat. And um, it's just, it's, it's an amazing tool. Um, part, part of my carnivore deal is, here's the thing. I, I went, I was eating off of paper plates, but the paper plates weren't big enough to eat a uh, hold all the steak I was eating at one time. <laughs> so I went to Walmart. I despise Walmart. I hate it, but I went there anyway, and uh, and I got some old crock cheese because that's the only place I can get it, and um, I bought three plates, three really nice big square plates. So I actually I'm single, uh, ladies, I'm single. And, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I work too much to even have a relationship, but um, I uh, I have three plates, I have three knives, I have three forks, I have three spoons. Um, and I have three glasses and a cutting board. That's pretty much, I mean, I've got plenty of pots and pans and stuff like that, but I don't use them. I've got a Dutch oven pan that I use when I cook bacon. Thank you, Dr. Ken Berry, uh, for teaching me how to cook bacon. 
and um i have a big a really big skillet that i use for eggs um that i've bought since i became a carnivore um something else that i noticed in my carnivore journey um the last 12 days i've been uh, i've been beef only just beef and water um i feel amazing on beef and water it's i'm shocked that I'm able to eat 25 pounds of meat a week and I don't gain a single pound. Matter of fact, I ate uh, about two and a half pounds last night and I weighed myself before I go to bed. I just have a habit of weighing myself before I go to bed and weighing myself when I get up. And I'm almost always two pounds lighter when I get up. I'm like, oh, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Um, but I weighed myself this morning. I was four pounds lighter when I got up. So I'm I'm right at 40 pounds of weight loss. I've got a little bit of love handle left and a little bit of pouch. Um, my mobility. So what's that about 185? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One at 186. Um, my mobility is unbelievable, man. I mean, I started working out this week. I bought uh at christmas 2022 2023 i bought a i bought a total gym you know a chuck norris machine that thing got used like four times that was it so i started working out this week um i get up at 3 30 in the morning work out before i go to work because i know i won't do it when i get home and um i worked out tuesday and wednesday i was in so much pain thursday oh my gosh oh my gosh but Chafee talks about recovery time. By Friday morning, I felt amazing. So I'm like, I'll work out again. I actually made it through the entire 40-minute workout without stopping. And I didn't hurt afterwards at all. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. Um, about five days ago, I guess I was uh, seven days on meat only. I got up one morning and... Um, looked at myself in the mirror which i don't really do a lot of and holy cow i mean my upper body it just went <laughs> and blew up and i'm like oh, okay something's up with this meat only deal because and my stomach is continuing to shrink but my upper body is just i think i, I like barry says uh i'm becoming what i should have been all along I'm it, it's the, amazing how that happens right it's just I, like oh this is the way i was meant to be i that's what i'm saying all this time you know um i uh, i don't i kind of miss eggs okay and i do have a little bit of coffee in my cream <laughs> um but my cream is half and half okay and it's just milk and cream okay i found a place that has just milk and cream without additives uh, i can't do heavy whipping cream nowhere around where i'm at has heavy whipping cream that does not have polysorbate 80 in it polysorbate 80 is a chemical it's a synthetic chemical and it's a thickening agent it's cream it's thick already you idiots that they're, they're trying to kill us I, there's no i am absolutely positive this is not about money this is not about money it's far and far more nefarious than that and so um it's kind of like uh titanium dioxide that is a paint whitener no kidding well guess what titanium dioxide is in uh, if you buy over-the-counter magnesium, read the label. That, that's what the main ingredient in Skittles is. That's why Skittles is banned in, they just banned it in California, believe it or not, finally. Every other country Skittles are banned in because it's got paint whitener in it. it what is wrong with the system? Okay, like I said, um, it's far, far more nefarious um, 
then in what I, and something else on my carnivore journey, I'm able to eat an incredible amount of food more than I've ever been able to eat in my life uh, at one sitting. And I'm just comfortably full. I've never been able to eat three pounds. I tried it uh, about three days into the meat only, uh, beef, beef only. I, uh, I ate three pounds. I bought three pounds of ribeye. And I'm like, I'm just going to see how I feel after I eat three pounds of ribeye. I felt amazing. I, I just felt comfortably full. And I'm like, I just ate three pounds of ribeye steak. I should be bloated out to here, man. But no, not at all. Um, I bring, uh, I bring maybe a, a pound to work with me and I eat that. And then I eat at minimum two pounds a night. So I'm three to four pounds a day. Um, I remember the, the first time I made uh, hamburger and eggs, I was able to eat eight, eight scrambled eggs and a pound of hamburger at one time. Holy cow, that's a lot of food. But if you figure you're not eating bread or things like that to bloat you, um, uh, what else is there? Well, sorry to jump in, but that, that's that's the thing. Everyone thinks about that and they go, eight eggs and a pound of beef? That's crazy. But yeah, <laughs> as you say, you're not eating anything that's bloating you. So it's different. The perspective yeah. of a regular dieter is completely yeah. off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely correct. I found out the hard way. Uh, I had gout last year during a period of time. No, 2022. Uh, I had gout in my right big toe so bad. I mean, I, I couldn't hardly walk. It was just, oh, it hurt so bad. And, uh, and that's going to lead me into, uh, what is improved in my life. Uh, well, I found out that you don't eat, uh, you don't eat pork and I can't eat pork and cause I bought some pork steak and I had some shrimp. Don't mix those two together. I can eat pork steak and I can eat shrimp, but I can't eat the two together because before I got done with my meal, before I ever finished my meal, the gout came back in my right big toe. It wasn't uh, unbelievably severe, but it was fair enough that I said, wow. Okay, th that's an instantaneous reaction that's never happened in my life. Uh, I've noticed that that food sensitivity, now that I'm, a carnivore is really, really high. Um, I'm feeling my body and I've never been able to feel my body before, if that makes any sense. Um, so what are the benefits other than the, the awesome weight loss, the mobility, um, no more arthritis. I'm 55 years old. I should have, I, I was in pain everywhere, everywhere hurt. And I don't hurt anymore, man. Uh, you know, Arthur was the worst one of those rightest boys. That's what I've been told. And so, and so, um, like in my knees, my hips, my back, my elbows, I mean, just every, and that thumb, that thumb right there had major arthritis. It doesn't hurt anymore at all. Matter of fact, it hasn't hurt in about a month and a half. I can just thumb away, man, you know. <laughs> and so, um, uh, what else? There's uh, no dandruff. I've had dandruff all my life. Other than when I lived in Florida for about 15 years, didn't have any dandruff there. But in the northern climates, for some reason, I, I get major dry skin and dandruff. No more dandruff. Um, no more pimples. I mean, I'm 55. I shouldn't be getting pimples anyway, but no more pimples. Um, I just feel so amazing. Sleep is unbelievably. I have been meditating for 30 years. I meditate before I go to sleep. Uh, deep, deep meditation. Uh, you know, they call it, I guess, transcendental. It's out of body experience stuff. And I've been doing that for 30 years. Um, and all of a sudden, I can't do that anymore because I'm asleep. 
I mean, just almost instantly, boom, I'm asleep five minutes into, okay, well, let's do this. And then, oh, no, I'm sorry about your luck, dude. You're asleep. You know, uh, that, that, that's all because there's no more pre-bed. So you just no more like... <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh, i just love pre-bed because pre-bed makes sense um uh i quit drinking coffee for a month and a half about uh two weeks after i quit ice cream i quit drinking coffee uh did i mention that august 31st was the day i started carnivore so it's been four months and one week um and I didn't really know how I was going to do on the lion diet. Um, but I just, I feel amazing, man. I mean, I just, I, I can't say enough good about this, this lifestyle. Um, and can I, can I just um, interrupt for a second to sure. emphasize something just for, especially for people that might be watching that are interested, but kind of, they're still they're still trying to get their head around the idea of doing carnivore or lion. Um, I really want to emphasize the thing about the arthritis because, like, it, it's been four months and one week, and you you said just before the the worst part, the arthritis you had in your thumb, was like it's been a month and a half, no pain. So it's Zero. literally like just turning a switch off. You go on the diet for a month or two, and it's like literally turning off the inflammation in your body, right? That's absolutely correct. That That is absolutely correct. And that's what it is. It's inflammation, okay? Um, I used to take Advil quite a lot. I don't take anything at all. And that's really the only pills I would ever take um was advil maybe tylenol i don't take anything anymore at all the the brain fog i didn't have a lot of brain fog because i deworm myself okay um <clears throat> i use uh two different products i microdose fenbenzidole and um and i take ivermectin once a month religiously i take a full dose of ivermectin uh, 200 pound dose. Um, and it's horse paste. I, I literally take horse paste. Now, of course, there's going to be naysayers out there. And by the way, this isn't doctor's advice, but my mom died of lung cancer. And I know for a fact, I had some serious, serious problems, especially when I was in the hospital. Uh, they did three different lung x-rays on me. And the doctor just shook his head when I asked him about it because I didn't have any insurance. So there was no money to be made. So they sent me home to die. And uh, and I discovered uh, Finbenzidol. There was a guy back in 2015, okay? He, was, he had small cell lung cancer that had metastasized through his entire body. It was in his blood, it was in his bones, it was everywhere. They sent him home to die uh, on hospice. And they literally gave him two weeks to live. Two weeks, man. I mean, how would you like to be told, oh, you're going to be gone in two weeks? Um, he had a friend who was a uh, research veterinarian that had given uh, 10 different mice, 10 different forms of cancer to study them. Well, <laughs> the mice got parasites. So what did he do? He gave them fenbenzidol. And blow me, all the mice were all of a sudden healed. All of them, um, every last one of them. And so he, he told his buddy, he's like, hey, you know, it's worth a try. So he went on a fenbenzidol protocol, which you can find online. Uh, you can you can find it on Askbook, better known as Facebook. Um, you can find it on there. Um, it's called Fenz Fenbenzidol Cancer Support Group. Okay, and the protocol is on there. Uh, and it just amounts to microdosing a pea-sized portion uh, once a day. And um, it's been years, but guess what? Three and a half months later, he was healed. He wasn't, he, he wasn't uh, treated. No, he was healed. He was cured of cancer 
for a $15 tube of horse paste, he was cured of cancer. Now, this may not work for everyone, but it's kind of like the carnivore diet. You don't know until you try. You know, give it a shot. If you're out there and you're new to, are you just now, oh, that guy's got an interesting story. What's this all about? It's about eating meat. It's about eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. It's about eating our ancestrally appropriate diet. And, you know, all the things that the carnivore doctors are talking about. Look them up. Look up Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Sean Baker, uh, Dr. Kills. There's just so many. There's a lot coming on board, too. Um, you know, because uh, I got to tell you what, Dave, the son of a bitch is lied to us. OK, that it's just that simple. And it, it can't be just about money. It has to be far more nefarious than that. Why are they so all about population control? And by the way, if they're willing to lie to you about something as simple and basic as food, what else are they lying to you about? Uh, but true healing comes from eating meat and lots of fat. Buddy, if I could eat just fat, oh my God, I'd be in heaven, man, because I just love fat. And I haven't had any of the problems that come with, like Joe Rogan had uh, had diarrhea pretty bad, you know, uh, disaster pants, I've heard it called. I think that's just hilarious. Uh, but he uh, he had disaster pants when he went on carnivore. Uh, well, you're eating too much fat. See, I didn't have any cramps at all. Well, I didn't have any cramps because I upped my salt intake. I eat an exorbitant amount of salt. I've heard you say on a on a podcast uh, just a little bit ago that you eat a lot of salt. Uh, you eat pink sea salt. Um, I like the Redmond's. Redmond's is just awesome. Um, in fact, I bought some for my daughter because she was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, so uh, I didn't get any cramps. You, you know, people get a lot of cramps and stuff like that. I didn't get any cramps. Um, maybe like one or two, but they just didn't last. Um, I remember being in boot camp when I was younger and I would jump out of bed because I was cramping so badly. Uh, I don't, I don't cramp any at all. Uh, I, I have normal poo. Hey Dave, let's talk about poo real quick. I, I, I literally have a Google calendar and I literally had to start keeping track of when I poo. I put a little bitty poop emoji and I color it yellow on the day that I poop because I got to keep track of when I poop, man. I'm like, I'm not pooping, but once every five to seven days when I first started, it was only uh, uh, three to five days. And that went on for a couple of months. Now I'm at five to seven days. And I'm eating 25 pounds of meat a week and I'm not pooping. My muscles are growing. My fat is going away in my stomach. Uh, the fat is pretty much gone everywhere else. Um, if I, I, sorry, if I could just jump in and say, it's almost as if we were intended to eat this way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, go figure, right? Now this goes completely against everything we've ever been taught. That's why I encourage everyone to actually use your mind and realize that things are not as they seem. Um, you talked about what you're eating, but how often are you eating? Is that just once a day? Uh, no, I eat, I eat, I eat about a pound uh, because of my schedule. And when I get up, like I got up at 1230 last night because uh, I wanted to get a shower for the interview and stuff. Um, but normally I get up at one o'clock in the morning, uh, on the weekends, I get up at three 30, four o'clock, four 30 in the morning through the week. And, um, so I'm kind of getting hungry around eight 39, nine 30, 10. And so I'll eat a whole pound with plenty of salt. Uh, I'll eat a whole pound that I cut up the night before and it's cold, but <laughs> it's still pretty yummy. And um, I'll eat a whole pound. And then uh, at night, I like what Dr. Kills says about um, 
about eating at night. I, I think that is the better way to go about this, this carnivore life, because he says your body isn't doing anything. If you eat in during the day or in the morning, your body is so busy and so active, it doesn't really have time, the time it takes for it to process all of that, all of that meat that you're putting in there. But if you're eating at 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 nighttime, you go to bed, like I eat uh, maybe an hour or two before I go to bed. And that gives the body time to process all of that meat while it's not doing anything else. And I, I like that. And so, um, like I said, at nighttime, I'll eat two to three pounds. So, And how how is your daughter or and other people around you reacted to this? Uh, the daughter's ecstatic because I don't actually have a tumor in my belly. <laughs> you know, so um, she's ecstatic for me. She's so happy. I, she she She's the only one who religiously watches my channel. OK, um, and she always comments, um, but she's really, really happy for me. And um, she's not really on board. She's got young kids, but she's starting to see the incredible results that this 55 year old guy is having. And she's like uh, 31 now, I think 32. Uh, I don't want to make her older than what she is. She's going to watch this. Oh, I'm in trouble already. Uh, so. Um, my my farm family both of my brother-in-laws are on board and it's not because of anything i've said dave both of my brother-in-laws are on board because i showed results okay i'm showing up to family supper and i'm not eating unless it's meat okay and mom uh thanksgiving dinner mom was like uh that's all you're eating is meat, ham and turkey. That's it. All that other good food here. And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's all I'm eating. And then I got up and opened my pants, you know, undid my belt, which I still haven't bought new pants yet, Dave. So I, I opened up my belt and showed her. I'm like, look, I've lost five inches off of my waistline. That's why I'm only eating meat. And because of that, uh, I talked to um, Leroy, and 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 I told him I just gave him a rundown of of the carnivore plan, how it works, um, and so he's on the plan, but he's kind of having some trouble with soda pop. Okay, um, so he's more of a dirty carnivore, uh, but I think he's seeing results. If he wasn't seeing results, he wouldn't keep doing it. And, you know, I use the, the phrase that I that I learned from the doctors, give it 30 days. I mean, you could do anything for 30 days, right? Right? Give it 30 days. See how you feel. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But I don't know a single person who's went backwards, not, not in the carnivore community. And uh, my other brother-in-law, he's more of a ketovore. He's, he's still eating some veg, and he'll have a little treat now and then. But, um, and, and it's funny, um, he actually said to me when I first started this four and a half months ago, he said, uh, well, you got to watch out for ketoacidosis. So immediately I'm Googling ketoacidosis. What is that? And I'm like, oh, that has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with me. And then, uh, New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, we had beans again. I did have one ladle full of beans. First thing off the carnivore diet since I quit ice cream, but you don't want to offend mom, okay? And uh, besides that, it's good luck to eat beans on New Year's Day. And so, um, so I had one ladle full. She puts potatoes in there and corn and onion. So, by the way, it was really hard not to go back for more because they were so good. Um, but uh, one of my one of my brothers, he says, uh, he says, well, you know, you're gonna get scurvy. And I'm like, what? are you talking about? Well, yeah, man, you're going to get scurvy. You have to have fruits and vegetables. You have to, because there was guys on the ships back in the day, all these sailors, all of them got scurvy because that's all they were eating was meat. And I'm like, if they were on a ship for four or five months, they were probably eating rotten meat. 
<laughs> okay. And so I had to do a Google search on scurvy. Come to find out, Google itself says, yeah, you're not going to get scurvy. There's enough vitamin C in the meat you're eating not to get it. So that's another thing about this, this carnivore lifestyle, this carnivore plan, this carnivore way of life, Dave, is that you don't have to supplement. You just eat salt and meat, man. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it really is the simplest way. I was talking to someone the other day and we were talking about what would happen if you went back to a regular way of eating. And for me, uh, I just can't even consider going back to another way of eating. There are multiple reasons, but the main reason is it's not going to be simple anymore. Yeah, I have to start right. thinking again about food, and I don't want to go back to that place. <laughs> I, I don't like to think about food. Uh, occasionally on the weekends, I'll uh, I'll go up if I can finally brought uh, half a pound of meat with me. I'll go up and I'll get uh, some burger patties with cheese. Uh, Wendy's, I like Wendy's and Steak and Shake the best. McDonald's just kind of sucks anyway. Um, all things McDonald's suck. Um, but I, I'll get a couple of Wendy's. I'll get a, a three Wendy's patties or uh, three um, three steak and shake. I really like steak and shake. But I've noticed that it's really rich. You know, like I eat buffalo and lamb. Uh, I had buffalo two nights ago. And it's really rich tasting meat. Lamb is really rich tasting meat versus beef. Uh, so I can't really eat a lot of it at one time just because it's so rich um i realize it's nutrient dense and it's really good for me can you talk a little bit about your channel please <coughs> well uh, it's chicken little carnivore and i am chicken little carnivore because i eat very little chicken and that's 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 like my that's like my tagline right and when i get done with the video i say chicken little out <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I, um, I gained six, seven, six, I gained six subscribers, um, in the last week and a half because I started putting out shorts and less than three minute videos. Okay. My impression click through rate, I only have 35 subscribers. But my impression click-through rate showed one and a half to three minutes. That's it. We live in a TikTok society, and I did a video about that. Um, I also did a video uh, called The Sad Omad of Woe. Because I don't like any of those terms except for sad. Okay, I don't like omad because why? Are you mad? <laughs> you know, I don't like too mad because I just, just don't get too mad. And I don't like woe because woe is in the Bible and that's a bad thing. Anybody, anytime they say, whoa, that's a bad thing. So I don't really care for those terms. Um, but uh, I have a lot of fun. I talk about different things, different aspects. Um, my life, you know, and what's going on in my life. Uh, but I've shortened it. I've shortened it down to shorts and less than three minutes because people just simply won't sit still long enough. We live in a TikTok society. They're, they're, if anybody gets to the end of this interview, it's been, what, an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 11 minutes we've been recording. I don't know if you're going to edit it or not, but anybody who gets to the end of it, well, hats off to you. You actually made it. <laughs> so I'll have to hand yeah. out certificates. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to find me there, uh, uh, Chicken Little Carnivore, if you wanted to reach out, my my email is, uh, uh, it's my name, it's P-A-U-L, the letter E, C-H-E-R-R-Y, J-R, at gmail.com, uh, Pauly Cherry Jr. at gmail.com. Paul, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with us. Thank you so Dave, much. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the fact that you allow people the opportunity to tell their story um, without interrupting and over talking at all. You ask pertinent questions. And on top of that, wow, man, everybody's story is amazing. Uh, my favorite so far, hands down, is Doubting Thomas. 
Love that guy. Um, but I get so much out of watching your channel and just listening to everybody's story because everybody's got a different story. Everybody's got a different way that they came to this this lifestyle. And I just really, really appreciate you, Dave. Thank you so much.